Google surprised almost everyone when they released the Android N preview ahead of Google I.O. Now we can catch a glimpse of what the next version of Android is going to be like and how it's likely going to act. I'm Joe Handy from AndroidAuthority.com and this is a quick look of Android N. Let's first tackle the general look and feel of Android N. On the surface, it looks and acts very much the same as Lollipop and Marshmallow with your usual home screens, Google Now, Settings, Notification Quick Settings, and for now, the app drawer remains as it was in Marshmallow. Getting around the OS is pretty much the same as it ever was, and there are no big changes there. One of the first noticeable changes is the quick settings. You can now drop down your notification shade to see a set of toggles nestled at the top. These allow you to interact with the usual variety of settings, including flashlight, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, airplane mode, do not disturb mode, and all of the others. You can, of course, swipe down a second time and see the quick settings in their full majesty. Unlike prior versions of Android, the quick settings are paginated now so you can see more than one set. Also, unlike prior versions of Android, the quick settings can now be edited without using the system UI tuner. It's worth noting that the edits you make will also change the available toggles when you first drop down your notifications. You can short press some of the settings such as Wi-Fi and open up a window for more options. Please note this does not work with all of them, but mostly with things like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. At any point, whether viewing the toggles or the quick settings, you'll be able to long press each thing and be directed to that functions page in the settings menu. Finally, it's worth noting that Google will include an API where developers can create their own quick tiles. They're being encouraged not to use them just to launch the application, but performing quick tasks associated with the app. For for instance, we imagine that Google Keep will have a toggle to create a quick note. Personally, I'd love to see a toggle for music controls, but that's just me. While we're hanging out in the notification shade area, let's talk about the new notifications. They received a visual tweak where the notifications are now more flush with the size of the screen and with each other, which gives a cleaner, more organized look, although it can be a bit tough to tell the notifications apart, especially if you're just glancing at them quickly. You'll also get to see bundled notifications. In Marshmallow, receiving multiple notifications from the same app forced you to open up the application. In Android N, you'll be able to unbundle the notifications and deal with them individually. This is definitely an improvement and great for those who want to respond to a message, but ignore all of the other ones for right now. On top of that is the new quick reply feature, which is only available in Google Hangouts for right now. It will open up a quick reply window right there in the notifications, so you don't actually have to open the application. This is going to be a godsend for messaging and SMS apps where it can get really tedious opening the application over and over again. On top of that, some notifications will also have little arrows that you can tap to expand the notification, which is pretty nice. This can be tripped by tapping on the top half of the notification so you don't need to snipe the button with your fingers or risk missing the press. You can also half swipe the notifications away to reveal a settings button that can change the app's notification settings or block the application from sending notifications altogether. The recent app screen received a few visual tweaks as well. The application cards will now be larger and easier to read, which makes better use of the screen real estate. There are some function tweaks for the recent app screen as well. If you continuously tap the recent app Apps button, you'll cycle through each application quickly until you find the one that you want. Additionally, a little timer will go off in the form of a loading bar and when it reaches its end, it'll automatically open the application for you. This is quick and simple, but occasionally too quick if you take more than a second to decide or remember which application you are looking for. You can also quickly switch between two applications by double tapping the recent apps button. This has been frequently compared to the alt tab functionality in Windows, albeit not as powerful. During our testing, we were only able to cycle through two applications, but in most cases, that's all you need. It's a pretty nifty little feature. While we're in the recent apps, let's talk about split screen. There are currently two ways to launch split screen mode. The first is to launch an application and then long press the recent apps button. This will drop the application into the top pane of the split screen and allow you to choose the second application that will go with it. The second way is to enter the recent app screen and then long press the colored banner at the top of any application's little card. You can then drag and drop the application into split screen mode. 
this feature loses a little bit of its charm on such a tiny little phone as the Nexus 5X here, but on devices like the Pixel C or the Nexus 9, the large screens can definitely handle two applications comfortably, and it will be a welcome change for those wielding tablets. Obviously, applications will be updated to make better use of this feature, although we found that even incompatible applications generally worked okay most of the time. And then you can leave split screen anytime by long pressing the recent apps button and the application populating the top pane will become full screen and split screen mode will come to an end. It's also worth mentioning that Android TV devices are also getting picture in picture support, although there is code that suggests that tablets could possibly get this functionality as well. There is also evidence to support that Google may eventually give us floating windows in the future, just like you see in, well, Microsoft's Windows. The System UI Tuner has been revamped as well. For those who don't know, you get to the System UI Tuner by long pressing the Settings icon in the Quick Settings, and then the System UI option will be available in the Settings menu. Inside the System UI Tuner, you'll find a few really fun new options. Dark Mode has returned to Android and like it was in the Marshmallow previews, but this time around it only works in the Settings menu. My best guess is that individual applications will have to code Dark Mode support in before it'll work for Android. Any applications. You'll also be able to add just a tint which overlays a bit of color to help lower the harshness of the screen on your eyes at night. Finally, you can have the OS lower the brightness and turn on during certain times of the day and only in certain lighting conditions, which is also kind of cool. Perhaps the most awesome addition to the System UI Tuner is the ability to control the red, green, blue values for your screen. This gives you the ability to change the tint of your screen manually so you can perfect your white balance or over overcome issues on your own. It's a very welcome addition. And while we're in the settings, let's take a look at what's changed there. The settings is more or less the same as it's always been with a couple of new things added in. The first is a slide out menu from the left side of the screen. This lets you maneuver between parts of the settings menu without having to go back to the main list. The slide out menu is also available while on the main page, which gives you two identical lists of settings options, which I thought was kind of goofy and amusing because it is, in effect, totally worthless on the main page. You'll also start receiving setting suggestions at the very top for popular settings that you may not have looked at yet. For me, it was encouraging me to set up the off-screen voice recognition for Google Now, which I eventually did. You'll also see an alert at the top notifying you if you're in Do Not Disturb mode, just in case you may have forgotten. A little thing that was added to these settings is the ability to add in emergency information if need be. This can be found in the settings under the user section. You can have a name, address, phone number, add in emergency contact info, and then some medical info like your blood type, any medications you're on, and more. It's a little bit of a hassle to get it on the lock screen, but this could be a very useful feature, especially for those who are chronically ill. We imagine that this feature will be improved over time. Google has also integrated universally accepted call and SMS blocking. This is accomplished by going into the dialer application and then going into the settings, and then you can add numbers from there. This is universal and should work everywhere once it's in place. This is another feature with APIs that will help improve the feature over time as more developers and mobile carriers use it. There is also a call screening feature built directly in where you'll have more control over who calls you, whether those calls get recorded on your device or even answered at all. Another new feature for the tinkerers in our audience is the new special access app settings. Originally, these were kind of like permissions but didn't appear in the traditional permissions list. Now, when you go to the configure apps by pressing on the settings icon in the apps section of the settings, you'll have quicker, easier access to special access settings and you can approve or deny apps applications that way for further control. Some of the things you can change include notification permissions, data permissions, and battery optimization permissions. There were a few other under the hood things that came with Android N and we'll go over those briefly. In the developer options, there is a new option for Android web view settings. For now, the only option is Chrome stable, but some pundits have predicted that you'll be able to change that to Chrome beta or Chrome dev eventually. Under the display settings, you now have the option to change your screen size. No, your Nexus 5X will not magically get any larger, but it will change how things are displayed to make them appear larger or smaller. This is OS wide as well, so it'll work in the settings, on home screens, and even other apps. 
Doe's mode has been slightly recalibrated. Before, the device had to remain perfectly still with the screen off before Doe's mode would work. Now there is a kind of lighter Doe's mode where the screen still has to be off, but the device can now be in motion, and we really like that a lot. Android N includes a new data saver feature where it'll turn off background data usage from applications in order to save data. You can also whitelist applications to allow them to use data in the background through this service if you want to. Android N is also redoing how it optimizes application for faster boot times. Before we were graced with the infamous optimizing app screen after things like system updates. Now you'll be able to boot faster and the applications will become optimized in the background after the boot. This should result in slightly slower app loading times, slightly faster application installs, and much faster boot times. Okay, so now we've been through the new features and you wanna know if this is something that you could run on your daily driver every day. Those who may be thinking of running the Android M preview will have a few issues that they're going to deal with. For starters, there are virtually no applications with direct Android N support, and while most applications will work perfectly fine, there are still plenty that have issues. On top of that, voicemail playback doesn't work, various settings and toggles may not work properly, Gmail is a little bit broken, Bluetooth is unstable, video playback is unstable, NFC is a bit goofy, and your ringtone may or may not go off. What that means is that this is definitely not daily driver material, so be sure to only install this on a test device or a secondary device because, well, it's just not a good idea to use this on your main phone in case you need it to do something. This is, after all, a developer preview and not meant for consumer level devices. Overall, Android N does feel like a bit of an iteration over Android Marshmallow rather than a full refresh, and that's perfectly okay. There are a lot of positive changes in Android N, a few new features for good measure, and a great deal of polish from features carried over from Marshmallow. There are a few new things like split screen and some visual tweaks to freshen things up a bit, but the main positive force here is the under the hood stuff like the revamped doze mode, screen calibration settings, and the display size settings. When you add it up, it gives you unprecedented amount of control over your device, and we expect those other new features to grow as well. That said, not everything is all that great. The notifications can become cluttered and visually confusing if you have a lot of them to deal with at once, since they all look so similar with so little space between them. Also, some of the best features are locked behind hidden menu items. The ability to calibrate your screen, for instance, is hidden in the system UI tuner, which isn't necessarily easy to find for average users. I understand that's probably by design design, but still, it kinda sucks. Mostly though, the only thing that Android N really needs is some developer loving and polish, which we assume is going to happen over the course of the next several months, and we'll see the result of that over the next few developer previews. Even still, Android N seems to be a positive step forward, at least for right now. Do keep in mind that this is just the first developer preview, and we'll likely see changes as things go along, so don't be surprised if some or all of this information changes before the final release come this fall. And that about does it for this video, folks. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up, and if not, tell us why in the comments. We have Lon's review of the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge linked up on the screen and in the video description below if you're looking for something else to watch. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority because we are your source for all things Android. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a wonderful day.